All right. Uh, Radiothon for the Children's Hospital of Illinois is Friday, and we've got a whole bunch of reasons that people need to support the hospital. And we're going to talk about some of them because John and Nancy are still talking. All right, joining us today, uh, two of our longtime Radiothon friends, Jeff and Sue Ruskuski, who are uh, back again. You guys are gluttons for punishment. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Or having oh, me back. Always we always love you. coming back. So this will be uh, year 22 of the Radiothon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have met so many people over the last you know, 22 years uh, that are in situations with their kids that that run the gamut from everything but your story was always so interesting because your boys were hit with something that not very many people understand right and not many people get a a grip on give me a a little bit of an idea what they have and what they're going through so they were officially diagnosed about three years ago they're 15 and 14 now with something that's a, a, a defect in a gene called the wwox gene so it's called worry syndrome and you know, it's kind of ever evolving. There's kind of at least like known 200, 300 cases in the world. So it's, you know, very rare. It's definitely, you know, part of the very rare diseases. And so it started for both of them when they were very little with some uh, intractable, very difficult to uh, stop, you know, seizures. And then from there, it kind of transitioned to some pretty severe global development delays. And as they've gotten older, a lot of respiratory issues and things like that. Yeah, a lot to keep track of. Do, was that, uh, how much difficult is, more difficult is that to have something where it's one of 300 in the world? It is difficult. Um, we do have a nice group um, that we talk to um, on the internet and things like that. Um, but yeah, it is hard when you see other children who, you know, are you know possibly in the hospital and nobody really knows what, it is, you know, and the doctors, you know, hadn't learned much about it either. So it's just so new and fresh. Um, but again, it's been around for what ten years that they've a little started. Less. Yeah, a little less is between the officially ten discovered years. that it's yeah. a gene that could cause these kind of neurodevelopmental issues. It's yeah. really something, yeah. and uh, and it's so it's such a different path than known diseases which are serious Mm -hmm. and are awful and all those things but at least there's a protocol right right and they're still working this one out yes yes they are so i know that you've had a long-term relationship with children's hospital uh the boys were born there born at children's they uh one One. was one was not okay yeah so you're starting right out of the gate with children's hospital uh here in peoria and they were how were they trying to figure out exactly what was going on with your kids Uh, I mean, they did a great job. I mean, it's obviously a big mystery. And so, you know, there's a lot of, you know, specialists here at the Children's Hospital. And so, you know, they exhausted everything they could do here. And then ultimately, you know, they had some, you know, partnerships that they still do. So we went to the Mayo Clinic once and and, and ultimately even uh, flew out to the National Institute of Health once. But, you know, primarily most things had been thankfully been able to be done right here in our backyard because, while things have stabilized over the years, we had a lot of years and in, in, in the early times where they were in and out of the hospital quite a bit, and we needed a lot of you know time with our specialists, and we were always very thankful that that was you know right in our backyard versus having to travel to Chicago, St. Louis, et cetera. And so, and it's twenty four hour a day yeah, care, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's you guys are just on and all the time. So. Yes. That's uh, not only, uh, you know, stressful and anxiety laden, but, you know, just just physically exhausting, too. And me. And I know that here at Children's Hospital of Illinois, they began a program called Almost Home Kids, Mm -hmm. which is basically a facility to help families like yours Mm -hmm. to do what? To get a break, to get additional care, all of that. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, families, um, if something's new to their family and to their child, for instance, for us, having Gabe have a trach, um, tracheotomy, which was in his throat, to allow to come down into his airway. Um, And that was something that was new to us. Um, So it was created from a stoma. And so many people um, don't understand how to work with these type of um, things, the equipment, um, just, you know, cleaning things for like the stoma. 
Um, so it is hard for parents to at first like acknowledge that they have something that's changed and it's very complex. And then second, secondarily, they have to learn how to do it. So how they learn that is they transition from the hospital over to Almost Home Kids so they can learn how to do these things and to feel adequate. And it is it is a, a long, like usually it's about six weeks is what pa- patients have been doing um, with their families. And then they can go home and feel comfortable and know what they're doing. And you recently just had to do this. You did some a little bit longer stay transitional care and you were educated on how to mm-hmm. help your yes. son? Yes, it, it was. It, we did, I think we were about two months out, so about eight weeks. And um, it was great. Um, we felt very confident when we came home. Uh, That's so important. So right? that was really important. Yeah. And we had people to outreach after. So if we had any questions, we also had a book that they gave us. Okay. Because we did have to do some, you know, point, like some tests to see, okay, are we adequate? Do we know exactly what we're, mm-hmm. you know, going up against and are we comfortable? And and, and we felt that way when we did leave. And, yeah. and that was just so wonderful. Good. I yeah. was trying to so the time frame on this, though, but it seems like, um, I mean, Almost 12 Kids is relatively new. I mean, it's a, a new facility. Were you guys instrumental at all at kind of bringing that service here? Did you know about it? We did. So... We were introduced to Almost Home Kids. So Peoria is the first kind of of its kind where, you know, the way I like to describe it when it came here five years ago, it was just kind of the hopes and wishes of the original two places up in Chicago. You know, if we if we could have a template and build it from the ground up, what would we make sure was there? And so, you know, Peoria is the place that had that very first facility of that type. So it's up in Naperville and in downtown Chicago. And I don't know exactly how many years it's been there, but... um. You know, I think, you know, 10 to 15 plus. Uh, and you're talking we about were, the one in Chicago. Yeah. And we were first yeah. introduced to it um, after Gabe's, you know, very first hospitalization when he was three. And again, he's 14 now. Yeah. So, you know, it's been up there for a, a good period of time. And, and we used it a couple of times when the boys were younger for respite, which essentially means, you know, Sue and I are both podiatrists. We have a yearly medical conference in Chicago. Uh, we don't have people necessarily, you know, it's, it's gotta be trained nurses. Right. You need care, care, right? Yeah. And so when we needed to go out of town for something like that, we needed a place where they could go. And so we took them up to Naperville. They stayed there a few times while we went to those meetings. And it was crazy because I remember telling them after we had such a wonderful experience up there that, boy, this would be pretty awesome if we could get Oh, sure. was awesome. yeah. And they had actually made mention. Bills were turning. Back. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well done, doctor. Right. They had seat. actually made mention back then. They said, you know, we've had some preliminary talks, and hopefully that kind of thing is going to happen. Oh, wow. And we yeah. had said to them, we boy, if there's down. anything Terrible we can ever do to help, you know, let us know. And so yeah. OSF and Almost Home Kids reached out to us a little more than five years ago once they had really decided to partner together and, you know, our family kind of became the face of some of the um, advertising materials and 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 those kind of things. And we went and spoke to some different groups just to tell them about, you know, our experience and, and to really encourage because it's it's a concept that even you know us who have you know medically complex children hadn't really um, understood fully until you're there. And once you're there and you really see how it functions, it truly is. An amazing concept, an yeah, amazing place. You know, the respite is so important. And it does, you know, the, the name is purposeful, Almost Home Kids, is that not just because they're trying to get you almost home, but they're trying to create an, an environment that is really like the home for the child. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just been proven that, you know, doing therapies and interactions, all those things, the, the kids learn better and learn more. It's mm-hmm. just a different type of environment there than what you have, you know, in the hospital when, you know, you're acutely sick. So, and I can't imagine the stress that that involves as a as a mother and a you know, just, so having the backup of the nurses there. Well, first of all, just the amazing care that they get, but then knowing that you're educated and you feel confident going home, and that you always have somebody to call twenty four seven. Yes, that must be just uh, lifting such a relief. Such oh, a relief. Yeah. yeah, it really. Was. And most yeah. communities don't get that. I mean, we're really fortunate. So, so you like say there's three of these. They're We've so got fortunate. one of them. And how about that? Now you're both doctors, so you're going to have a you know 
a, a, a pretty good idea of the terminology of some of the things that, that they're talking to you about with this care, but are they able to convey that to, you know, like a, a lay person like me, if my kids were in this world of hurt, I mean, am I, are they able to speak the King's English so I can just understand all this stuff? I really think they do. I mean, they, really you know, they do a great job. And, and we even told them from the beginning that, listen, just because we're physicians, you know, we deal with foot and ankle problems. And <laughs> right, cases. right. So yeah. all these new respiratory things, I mean, you know, don't feel like you're, you know, talking to us inappropriately if you're giving to us in basic language. We want to yeah. make sure, and right. this is our child, we want right. to make sure that we're, we're learning as comfortable like as can be. Else. And honestly, the transitional care piece is kind of the major focus with respite being very important. And after, you know, what happened to us last year, you know, Gabe ultimately went into respiratory failure and he spent six months out of the house. He was, you know, in the hospital wow. from September through end of January, stabilizing him and then, you know, getting the, the tracheotomy. And then we spent about two months at Almost Home Kids and truly, you know, that's where I really ensued too. You know, we truly experienced, you know, how important this really is because they made sure, you know, that we were well prepared. And it was probably three or four weeks after we went home that he developed a plug one day in his trach and we had to make an emergency change right there. And we handled it fine. I'm not saying it wasn't a little bit stressful. Sure. Did, but, I'll say. but we handled it because we <laughs> were prepared. Yeah. yeah. You know? the point, right? yeah. No, yeah. The point is to, to, you know, make sure that, you know, parents and kids have the safest and, and best transition home as possible. You know, decrease the chance that you end up back in the hospital in an emergency situation or other kind of things. And how is it? How is that getting that list of stuff that could happen from them? And that's got to be. Yeah. So they do. You know, they put you in um, a position where you're going to have a plan, and she, they're going to watch you. They're not going to get involved. They're not going to intervene. They're going to watch you. And and then they'll tell you, OK, this is what you did wrong. You know, this is what you have to fix and this is how you can do it. So they're pretty masterminds. And they you know, you come home with this lovely book with everything possible. <laughs> Dear, <laughs> yeah, you really don't have to be that concerned. I mean, you have to be concerned, but not to the point where you think it's it's not going to happen. You know? And how's Gabe today? Like, right. Gotten th- kind uh, of through that transitional he's period. And he is like his eyes. He's like. Uh, his eye gaze before was very just like stoic. Now he's like looking around, tracking the room. Okay. He smiles. He, you know, just seems like he's relaxed. He's not working hard. You're not looking at his lungs. And Isn't that the okay. big deal of relaxation where you yes. just, oh my gosh, he's comfortable and that's yes. what matters. That's the right sure. thing. That's, yeah. been, I mean, that's what the really part. did. You know, with For all him. the issues they had, it was not an easy decision, you know, as we were trying to figure out what to do when his condition was worsening and you know, we're really glad that we ultimately made the decisions we did with the help of our, you know, care team and those kind of things because he truly has done much better. He's, you know, gained weight. He's very comfortable now. And, right. You know, mm-hmm. team game. when we yeah, see him, game. right, when we were seeing him day after day for so long, I don't even know that we truly realized how hard he was working. Yeah. Because yeah. we kind of just seen his baseline for so long. And, mm-hmm. you know, now seeing this new baseline, it's like, Wow, buddy, you mm-hmm. look so comfortable. So that makes your heart a little bit it does. beat a little the easier. Are sure. Yeah. We're talking with, with Jeff and Sue Ruskuski, uh, and we're getting ready for our uh, OSF Healthcare Children's Hospital of Illinois Radio Thought this Friday. And you guys are, have been so generous and are always so generous with sharing your family with everybody. Mm-hmm. It's a, not an easy walk back into those times or even forward sometimes for you yes. guys. And, and I know people listening who have kids who are in similar situations are going, thank goodness there's this place mm-hmm. over here that can help mm-hmm. my kids. How, how does the money, like if, if people are donating to Almost Home Kids, what, what where is that going? What is it doing? I mean, it goes to a variety of things. I mean, certainly it's kind of full service, you know, different kinds of physical, occupational, music therapy. You know, it's having uh, equipment and supplies, you know, for the children. Um, I know they're working right now on a campaign to, you know, do some things with, you know, more of a centralized monitoring system for the kids. But, you know, there's uh, there's always, always, you know, um, supplies and, and services that, that would need to be utilized by the families. Because, you know, the reality is a lot of the families that utilize the service, you know, uh, life is pretty difficult with yeah. the amount that health care costs can kind of build up when sure. you have, you know, kids with this level of medical complexities and things like that, too. And so, you know, they, they really... Um, take care of everybody, regardless of insurance, financial situation, all that kind of stuff. I mean, everybody has a chance to, you know, be over there and have their kids, 
you know, taking care of the same and, and, and help improve their situations. We've been doing our, um, we have a G&G Foundation, which is Garrett and Gabe. Mm-hmm. And so um, we started that where it's our second year of doing our annual golf one year prior, three years now. That was before we had the foundation. Okay. And so um, last year we presented a check and we will be presenting a check this week as well. So we're really excited for that. Yeah, that's um, great. We, we had about 50 more players. Um, oh, so really? we kind of maxed out on all the golf course areas. Excellent. And we also had people coming in just to have dinner and to see what was going on. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Congratulations. Yeah. Success yeah. And raising Thank you guys. Money. Well, listen, uh, update on the kids is always great to hear. Uh, update on the facility, continuing to care for everybody's kids, mm-hmm. always great to hear. Yes. Uh, check come from the golf outing, great to hear. Yeah. I'm loving now that. Yes. Uh, and your time, especially to come in and, uh, and share again your family with us. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, Appreciate it. Always happy to be always here. Happy. Yeah. yeah. But like I was, I was telling uh, Jeff yesterday, I was like, it's not really a radio thought if the Ruskuskis aren't there anymore. <laughs> so you yeah, got to get, a, get it in before we yeah, yeah. A certain amount of obligation to, to come back and see us every <laughs> year after year after year. And we'll uh, let you all know uh, how it goes. And other than that, travel safely and enjoy the holidays. And great to see you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you for all you guys. You do. bet. Thank you. You guys are the best. All right, OSF Healthcare Children's Hospital of Illinois, Drive for Miracles Radiothon fires up on Friday. We'd love for you to join us and help raise a lot of money for this amazing place that uh, saves our kids because we love talking about that, which reminds me, as long as you keep listening, we'll keep talking. So we'll see you next time and we'll catch you on the Radiothon. Bye.